Let me now leave the floor to Professor Holger Thiele of the University of Applied Science in Kiel and Institute of Food Economics in Kiel, Germany. Let me ask you two questions straight away, Professor Thiele, following Mr. Rossi's presentation. Three market analyses have been suggested for Europe, the North, the South, and the East. Do you agree on this approach? Perhaps during your presentation you can answer my question if you like. And then since on the 31st of March, I know that it is not a good idea to look at the past, but uh, that was the date when the quota system was over in Europe. Apart from the situation in Italy, do you believe that this was an effective system in Europe? Thank you very much. You have the floor, Professor Thielen. Um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, dear, dear Angelo and dear, dear team of uh, CLAL uh, for an invitation uh, to this uh, uh, great event. Uh, and I was already here last year and uh, so it was uh, uh, a great time last year and so uh, I think it's uh, uh, very nice that uh, you invited me again to come, come here. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the uh, um, uh, in the next uh, uh, few minutes, I will give you a short uh, introduction to the European uh, Milk Futures. And as uh, Angelo uh, already uh, explained to us, that uh, uh, we will face uh, uh, more um, volatility in the European milk market, uh, and uh, uh, that's why we uh, have to talk about uh, uh, futures uh, uh, in, uh, in Europe, and uh, we will also uh, get a presentation on the U.S. market, uh, um, and uh, in the U.S. Uh, the topic is, uh, um, is an old topic. Uh, I think you started with the milk futures when we started with the milk quota system, something like that, so in the European Union. So, uh, so we were more... Uh, we went the more regulated way, and uh, you started with a uh, liberalized uh, way uh, dealing with uh, volatility or low prices. Um, uh, that's just a short overview about in our institute. I will go, f go uh, further. I just only want to point out that uh, on the right-hand side, we are... Uh, uh, we are giving a lot of seminars on uh, dairy markets and uh, on on dairy futures in the last uh, uh, two and a half uh, years. Uh, I think there were more than uh, 35 uh, seminars on, on dairy futures. And, um, uh, and it was uh, very interesting for us to give uh, these seminars, uh, not only um, uh, because we try to uh, increase the know-how on, uh, on uh, on this topic, on this new topic, but also uh, we learned a, a lot uh, in these seminars because um, we uh, we learned uh, about the many reasons uh, why milk futures um, are not the best way uh, for our European industry. Um, uh, so that was uh, interesting, and some of these. Uh, ideas I uh, have still in mind and all these reasons uh, I have still in mind and uh, we can discuss on that uh, later. Um, yeah, what's new in the European uh, milk uh, markets? Um, uh, we have a new demand, uh, um, uh, overall we have a new demand for efficient uh, price risk management and uh, why it's a case, uh, this is a case, uh, the European Union will increase the market shares on the global dairy markets 
Um, uh, Angela already uh, explained this uh, with uh, uh, very interesting numbers. Um, so we have an increasing convergence between global and EU milk markets. And, uh, uh, and we are facing new price risks for the EU, EU dairy markets due to uh, international climate risk. So uh, um, uh, if uh, we have problems, uh, for example, uh, as uh, Angelo said, uh, the example of, uh, for Oceania, um, uh, the uh, a drought in uh, uh, Oceania will uh, influence our uh, dairy prices or will uh, uh, increase our uh, dairy prices, uh, and that's uh, the new reality in uh, the European Union. And uh, uh, there are some more risk uh, uh, beside the climate risk. There are also a lot of economic uh, risks and also uh, political risks. Uh, for example, the, the Russian uh, embargo is one, one uh, example for these uh, political risks we have in the, uh, in, in the, in the chain. And, um, uh, and we also have new price risk for, for EU dairy markets uh, due to the currency risks. Uh, 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 and uh, I will explain that a little bit uh, later. And uh, um, we have, after uh, the abolishment of the milk quota system uh, in last month, we have uh, uh, new farm investments, and we have already uh, new farm investments in the last years. Uh, and uh, we will uh, face uh, uh, a growth in milk production. And uh, this growth uh, increases the liquidity problems of, of uh, the EU milk production. So uh, um, what's new in the European Union? Uh, it's a demand of, uh, we will uh, have a higher demand of uh, uh, price stability of milk and milk products um, uh, in the future. And, um, uh, efficient milk price risk management will be more and more important, an important factor in milk market uh, competition. And uh, so it's just a, a new factor in the, in the, in the competition. And uh, um, efficient risk distribution between the different members of the milk supply chain, for example, farmers, processors, customers, will be an important task in the future. Everybody uh, try to reduce their own risk-taking position. Um, uh, that's, a, uh, that's a normal competition on, on risk you have in a chain. Uh, and in former times, uh, uh, the, uh, the highest risk uh, in the chain was uh, taken by the farmers. And uh, I think uh, in the future we will we'll have uh, much more discussion about this uh, uh, risk-taking position of the farmers. Um, this is just an overview about the uh, price risk of different agricultural products, uh, just to show or just to explain that uh, butter and skim milk powder, uh, the, this is just one um, volatility index, is the coefficient of variation. Um, and uh, this gives you just an idea that skim milk powder and butter uh, uh, have a higher um, uh, uh, volatility, price volatility on the world market than, uh, for example, wheat, coffee, or uh, cocoa. So um, uh, it's a product which uh, has, uh, or, uh, these are products uh, which already faces a lot of uh, volatility. Um, uh, as Angelo said, uh, um, the exchange rate uh, influences our milk prices the exchange rate between U.S. dollar and uh, uh, the euro. Uh, for example, just for example, for uh, 2014, uh, where uh, we uh, had a decrease from 1.38 to 1.08 uh, U.S. dollar per euro, um, this increased our uh, milk price uh, of uh, uh, eight, uh, 8 cent per kilogram of uh, of milk. Yeah. Um, so uh, this uh, devaluation of the euro in uh, 2014 increases our prices, also our milk prices. And uh, if, we, um, uh, if we would have had a different situation, for example, uh, a revaluation, 
uh, of the euro, um, then uh, that could well be that we are already at the level of, uh, of the intervention price uh, in the European uh, Union. So uh, in 2014, the exchange rates or the devaluation of the euro uh, helped, helped a lot. Uh, what uh, will happen in 2015, uh, nobody knows it exactly in the moment. Uh, and um, these, uh, uh, the red line uh, shows you that uh, we are uh, already in the face of uh, a revaluation of the euro. Um, Yes, uh, coming to the topic dairy futures, uh, what kind of dairy future contracts we have in Europe um, running at, uh, at the moment. Uh, we have uh, the skim milk, powder, uh, skim milk powder contracts. These are five ton contracts. Uh, they started in, in May 2010 at the Eurex in uh, Frankfurt. Uh, and uh, since May uh, 11 in, in 2015, so uh, just uh, some days ago, uh, they moved uh, to uh, to the another exchange to uh, to the EEX, uh, EEX uh, uh, exchange in uh, Lipsia. I think Lipsia is the uh, Italian way of uh, how you pronounce it. Uh, it's uh, Leipzig in, uh, uh, in, uh, in in Germany. So they moved to the to this exchange, and that's it's the European Energy Exchange. Uh, and um, uh, also the butter contracts. Uh, uh, change to this uh, exchange, uh, and it's uh, uh, it's a daughter company. This EEX is a daughter company to the Eurex, uh, and um, we also have uh, uh, beside the skim milk powder and butter, we have uh, uh, whey powder contracts. They started later in September in 2012 uh, at the at Eurex, and uh, they also moved to uh, to the EEX in. Uh, in uh, Lipsia. Uh, since May 2015, uh, uh, also the same in this month, uh, 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 we uh, introduced new uh, future contracts, not at Martif, so that's a uh, mistake in this uh, slide. It's not at the uh, Euronext, uh, uh, but uh, at the moment um, uh, uh, I have uh, not much information about uh, what's traded there. Uh, I think at the moment there are uh, they're not really uh, uh, traded, uh, but uh, they might uh, start in the next uh, couple of uh, um, couple of uh, months. Uh, yes, milk price hedging uh, uh, is uh, possible um, using, uh, for example, the European uh, butter futures, and this is uh, only the example for the butter futures, uh, um, and uh, uh, it's uh, based on. Uh, um, as it's uh, uh, shown in this uh, graph, it's uh, based on uh, three, um, uh, three indices or three uh, quotations, the German butter quotation, for example, the Dutch and the French butter quotation. And uh, uh, on this uh, quotation, um, uh, we uh, have the uh, settlement index um, always uh, at the delivery months. And... Um, uh, uh, and the skim milk powder contract is uh, uh, also managed and also um, calculated by these uh, three um, quotations. Um, uh, we looked a little bit to the history um, uh, at the beginning, and that's always the case if you start with future contracts, uh, if you remember the start of the future contracts on oilseed and, um, and, and, and grain or wheat in, uh, um, uh, in Europe, um, uh, when you start with, uh, with uh, futures, then uh, you're normally uh, it's, it's normal that you have a low liquidity at the beginning, uh, and uh, the liquid, liquidity uh, is... Uh, um, uh, is increasing as you uh, see it here in uh, the butter um, uh, the, in the butter contracts. The butter is stronger traded uh, since uh, since 2011. So they started in, 2000, in May 2010, and since uh, mid 2011, uh, it was uh, uh, a little bit stronger traded. And um, uh, the, um, and the uh, left hand uh, on the left hand side. Uh, 
on the, the blue line is the contract price. It's just the average, average price of the traded contracts. And uh, the bars, the red bars, uh, demonstrating the, uh, the volume, the daily volume of traded contracts. And uh, the, the scale on the right-hand side says uh, we have uh, s only some days where we have tra uh, the, where the number of traded contracts, butter contracts at Eurex is uh, 120 or uh, over 100, uh, but uh, 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 mostly it's uh, below uh, below 60, uh, below 60 uh, traded contracts uh, per day. So, uh, some days uh, on some days uh, there are still uh, no contract traded. Um, uh, and if you compare that, for example, uh, our colleague from, uh, from CME will, will uh, I think, uh, uh, show us uh, um, the trade volume of uh, uh, what's going on in the, uh, at the CME. Um, there's, uh, on the right-hand side, there's uh, not uh, 100, there are, there are uh, 2,000, for example, or, or, or more contracts uh, traded per day, yeah, per day. Uh, and, and also with a higher uh, size of the contract. Uh, so um, just uh, keep that in mind uh, if you compare this, uh, uh, the liquidity situation in, uh, in Europe with uh, the liquidity situation in, uh, in the U.S. on the future markets. Um, but anyhow, uh, um, uh, since, uh, since May 2010, uh, there were more than 7,000 butter contracts traded. That's a volume of uh, roughly 36,000 uh, uh, tons of butter. Um, uh, and uh, uh, these are the numbers for skim milk powder. Skim milk powder started uh, much later um, uh, and uh, became uh, stronger since, uh, since 2013. And uh, the number of contracts are lower uh, compared to the butter, uh, and uh, also the the volume. Uh, uh, for example, since uh, they started with the uh, skimmed powder contracts, they only uh, traded uh, 11,000 tons of skimmed powder um, uh, via uh, the Eurex or, or now the EEX. Um, yeah, whey powder uh, started in 2012, uh, and uh, at the moment, uh, uh, the, uh, the the current date, data uh, says that we have uh, traded uh, uh, a little bit more than 5,000 tons uh, of uh, whey powder uh, at uh, at that exchange. Yeah, if you. Uh, um, uh, go f a little bit deeper in uh, what's going on on the uh, exchange. Uh, um, for example, in, uh, um, um, if you take the, the quotations at the EX uh, from May 27th, that was yesterday, um, the, uh, the milk price level at the EX uh, is uh, till, until October 2015 something about 26 cent per kilogram of uh, milk. So it's standardized milk, it's 4% uh, fat and 3.4% uh, of, uh, of, of, of protein. So we, uh, uh, as you see it here, we, we use the, the uh, F but means uh, that the butter future contract um, and uh, F S and P means the uh, skim milk powder contract and uh, on the right hand side uh, you uh, see the calculated uh, raw milk value uh, at uh, farm gate uh, level. So uh, that's what we daily, uh, that's our daily work. We are converting the, uh, the future contract prices from butter and future contract prices from skim milk powder into a raw milk value uh, just to uh, make it easier for, the, uh, for farmers and also for, for processors we're thinking in milk prices to uh, um, to compare uh, what is the what is the milk price level uh, at the future at the moment. So um, uh, so now it's uh, possible, for example, to, uh, uh, to 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 save a level of 25.6 cent, for example, um, for August 2015, or for July of 25.3 cent. Uh, if you um, uh, if you sell uh, butter, one butter and two uh, skim milk powder contracts 
um, then you can save uh, 100 tons of, uh, of, of raw milk, uh, for example, in uh, July on a level of 25.3 cent. But you have to take into account that the, the raw milk value at a farm gate level is not the, f uh, the price which a farmer is earning um, at farm gate because, uh, for example, in, uh, in, in Germany we have an, another subsidy uh, for the farmer, uh, uh, or I, w I, will c I, I call it subsidy. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's a value added tax. Uh, it's uh, the value added taxes uh, we have to put on uh, these prices on top. Um, and uh, because all these prices on the, on the future markets are without value added tax. And uh, so uh, you have to take that into account and uh, also uh, correction uh, values for uh, higher uh, fat uh, percentages or protein percentages. Um, Professor, yeah? e perdoni, l'IVA quanto ammonta in Germania? I apologize. How much is value added tax in Germany? How much is value added tax in Germany? It's 10.7 percent, um, and um, uh, in August, uh, just to give you an example, for August uh, 2014, uh, as we have seen it in the in the slide before, at the moment we are at a very low level. So, if you discussing this with uh, with farmers and you explain them, it's a good idea to go to the future market and to. Uh, uh, to make sure that you have a, a, a higher price in the future. Yeah? Uh, I think it's uh, not an easy task uh, to explain farmers that 25 cents is a good price uh, in, uh, in September, but it might be the reality. Right? Uh, it might be the reality. So, uh, but uh, anyhow, um, uh, but in August 2014, for example, it was possible um, when you uh, uh, look to uh, uh, August 2014, it was possible to save uh, uh, a milk price level for July 2015 uh, of uh, 30, uh, 33 euro cent if you, uh, uh, if you had sell at that time um, uh, skim milk powder and butter contracts uh, at the exchange. So it, it, it is possible to, uh, uh, to save, uh, for example, a higher price if, uh, if uh, you have the expectation that the prices are going down. If the prices are already down, then it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not a good uh, idea to, uh, to, to uh, maybe to sell at this uh, level if you have the expe expectation that uh, the prices are going up. So. Um, 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 but anyhow, it, it was possible uh, to, and it is possible to uh, hedge prices, uh, also raw milk prices at the uh, uh, exchange, even if you have not a fluid milk contract at the exchange. This is just a forward curve um, at, the, at the moment, uh, the raw milk value calculated also, uh, already again from butter and skim milk prices uh, at the EEX uh, uh, from uh, yesterday and uh, uh, this uh, demonstrates that uh, the expectations at the moment uh, are uh, like this, uh, that we have more than 26 uh, cent uh, uh, in, the, um, uh, in uh, the end of the year um, uh, at the uh, as a raw milk value uh, based on the future prices. Yes, stabilization of milk prices is, uh, uh, if you explain that to, to farmers and, and also to processors, it's, uh, uh, maybe this is a good explanation uh, that uh, uh, we, you're not facing the lowest price and that's, I, that's the idea. Uh, uh, which has, everybody has in mind, but you are also not facing the highest milk price. Uh, and uh, stabilization means you are uh, something in between, and, uh, um, and uh, it could be that uh, uh, it could be that if you stabilize, uh, stabilize your milk price, that your neighbor 
are facing a higher price uh, because of uh, no stabilization, yeah? but uh, it could also be that uh, you stabil stabilize your price and your neighbor is facing a, a lower price uh, because uh, uh, he uh, doesn't uh, stabilize the prices uh, via uh, exchanges. Um, yeah, the outlook uh, due to liquidity problems, um, there's a strong need for dairy risk management strategies in future European milk supply chain. And uh, in the future, we will see many different price models uh, and uh, risk management models. We are just uh, starting uh, in, in Europe um, thinking in, uh, in these sort of models. and. Uh, the European milk futures will play in, uh, that's our opinion, play an important role in future milk price risk management. And uh, the volume of uh, um, the uh, future contracts on skim milk powder and future contracts on butter increases since 2010, as I already uh, showed you. And uh, uh, now it's possible to hedge uh, milk prices, price risks at uh, the European exchange. Um, and uh, farmers and uh, processors can hedge uh, also fluid milk or fluid uh, or milk products uh, via um, these both um, products if they take the individual basic risk into account. So you have to calculate your individual uh, basic risk, uh, which occurs. Uh, in difference to uh, what uh, what your raw milk value is. Uh, uh, or what your net value is uh, based on your product portfolio compared to uh, what is the net value based on uh, skim milk powder and, uh, and butter. So uh, every firm and every farmer has to calculate it uh, uh, individually uh, in order to know what's the risk, risk uh, 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 if you are uh, taking part at the uh, future exchange in Europe. Thank you very much for your attention. Grazie, Professor Tile. Una domanda subito. Thank you very much, Professor Tile. I have an immediate question. Why are futures quoted on the energy exchange in Leipzig? Um, I don't know. Uh, um, uh, the uh, the reason we heard um, uh, is that uh, uh, Leipzig is a smaller exchange, and uh, it's a it's a real commodity exchange, um, and um, so they they trade it um, they trade it uh, already. Um, uh, uh, energy uh, via um, via commodity uh, exchanges, and um, so it's it's a real commodity exchange. And the um, exchange in uh, Frankfurt is a much much larger exchange, and it's more uh, based on uh, uh, financial products. So it's uh, um, and I think the, the 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 value or the importance of uh, the agricultural products. Um, is, uh, is, is, is much higher in, uh, in Leipzig uh, than in, uh, in Frankfurt. So uh, uh, it, it might be that's uh, not only a, um, uh, a very, very small part, so it, it will become a bigger part in the, in the whole exchange. That makes, uh, that makes a little bit sense for me. Thank you very much. I have another question. Uh, or better said, it's a question I asked you at the beginning. Do you believe that the quota system in Europe was effective to sustain prices? And do you agree with Mr. Rossi when he says that Europe can be better understood uh, if you divide it into the North the south and the east, at least when we talk about milk and milk product markets. Um, yes, uh, um, if you, uh, as uh, Angela already said, if you uh, 
divided uh, uh, the, the European market in the different regions, uh, um, it's, uh, 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 it's, it, it's clear that uh, uh, you can understand it much better because we have uh, um, uh, not only very different uh, structures in the, in, the, in the dairy farms, but we also have uh, very different uh, structures in the, in the, in the, on the processing side and also on the customer side. And, um, uh, and uh, uh, some regions are uh, much more oriented uh, or were very early oriented to world market, uh, to the world market, and uh, some regions are uh, uh, were very late think, thinking about uh, the world market, and uh, so uh, I think that uh, makes sense to, uh, if you want to understand the, um, the European uh, milk sector, to divide it into different regions. Uh, it's uh, my opinion too. Um, uh, coming back to the first question uh, about the milk quota system, uh, of, uh, if the milk quota system uh, 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 stabilized or increased uh, prices. I think that was a question in the past. Uh, um, and um, uh, uh, I think in, 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 in theory, um, uh, quota system or in theory would uh, explain it as a supply management model. Um, uh, quota systems uh, 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 could, in, could increase uh, milk prices, um, but um, then you have to be extremely restrictive with your milk quota system. And, uh, um, and uh, to be very restrictive with the milk quota system means you, uh, the super levy, uh, for example, has to be very high, and, uh, and not only high, uh, also have to uh, uh, work uh, maybe in, 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 in many, many years. And, um, uh, and uh, the problem is uh, that uh, um, uh, you have to be, um, or you need, uh, uh, you need barriers uh, to, uh, to the world market. Uh, and uh, um, if we um, focusing on uh, the European situation, um, uh, 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 on our milk production volume uh, and uh, the consumption in the future, then it's uh, clear that uh, uh, we need to export more, export more to the world market. And, uh, um, and uh, um, this means that uh, we cannot uh, uh, put too many barriers on our um, uh, um, uh, against the world market. So, um, and then uh, quota systems are not uh, really working. Uh, so then they, are, can, they cannot functioning very well. Uh, and then they, uh, they, they become more and more um, expensive. And uh, that was uh, what, we, uh, what we observed uh, in, the, in, the, in, the last, uh, in the last years. So uh, um, a milk quota system uh, can only be functioning if you are very, very restrictive, and uh, if you are, um, uh, if you are, have uh, high barriers uh, uh, to the world market, and uh, both was not the case in the European Union. Molte grazie. Thank you very much, Professor Thiele.